Yo, what's up, YouTube? Mr. Peculiar here, finally, with some psychedelic adventures. What we're going to do today, something a bit different with the old kick and bass. You see a lot of tutorials already around covering this subject, so I thought I'd try and uh, do it with just some Cubase plugins. So I pretty much got a kick here, bass down here on MIDI. Now, if we have a look at the Smaxoscope here, we can see that if I mute the bass, we play the kick and wait for it to come to line. We've got a nice transient at the start of the kick, but as soon as I add the bass, it goes all wonky. So this is MIDI bass. You can see I've cut the notes shorter here, but uh, it seems to be overlapping with the kick. So pretty much the first step is once we've uh, created a bass, is to bounce it down to audio. So we've got better control out, got better control over it. So um, just going to render out the kick onto its own little channel down here and mute the original one that's just an omnisphere bass that I whipped up so if we have a look quite down here at the audio you can see that even though we've cut the notes short on MIDI um, it's out of time for a start and they are, the notes overlap so you can see there's a few milliseconds delay there what we want to do is just go through i'm just going to chop the one out delete that one delete the other one come in here and work with this as our single base file let's uh find a zero point i'm that's not quite there but i'm going to call that it and uh let's just quickly lay this out do the standard and we'll check that out. So you can see now that's not clipping on the on the kick, which is exactly what we want. I like to do a fade out. Don't want any clips. And if we want to get really fussy, we can just pull in the end. We can really start to see the end of each note quite clearly. It gives you a nice clean bass. So um, first thing we're going to do here is load up our first plug-in. And I'm going to use something to shape shape the bass a little bit, and that's the uh, it's quite an interesting one. Multi multi envelope shaper. Oh, that's the multi expander. Sorry about that. Multi envelope shaper. So it creates a uh, attack on different different regions of the bass, basically. So if we play it again. Now this does mess with the, the waveform of the bass a little bit. So as you can see, on, off, on. But we can deal with that later. So what I'm trying to do is find find a nice region in the bass that I want to enhance the punch of. We want a nice punchy bass here. So I usually reach for this one. And we can actually disable the others for now. Let's try and get a bit, a bit more punch out of that mid end. Here we go, here it is with the attack. You get a real nice pop now. Don't worry about these waves for now, we're more concentrating on the sound. pop could also be partially sometimes I just like to give it a little little tickle at the start of the wave so you can hear it, hear it as it changes as we move this in. and that's affecting more of the higher region we want this low midi subtle but it does add up later on so let's stick on the bass one and really you need good sub to hear this but we're just going to make the sub a little bit choppier now the other thing that we're going to try and do is get that wave hang on i just freeze this i'm going to 
try and balance out balance out the level of the kick to the level of the bass have them pretty similar levels so the next thing that I like to put on would have to be and I'm going to put it after but it's not a Cubase plugin but it is free so I think we can let that slip and that is the M saturator great little plugin secret weapon of mine I just absolutely love it so what we're going to do with this is replay the audio and we're going to try and balance out the level of the bass we'll get more harmonics it's going to sound much better so here we go let's give that a go it's going to most importantly it's going to flatten these peaks out for us uh, now this is the trick here pulling the output gain down so currently sitting out and i'll turn them turn that off 10.5 so we kind of want to stick in that area for you so if we put the output gain down we can start pushing the input gain up one other that is great we all know about it the good old quadrifuzz they usually things sound better when you put it on people say the old one's better I think this one's more flexible but that's my personal opinion and what I like to do here is mute all the other bands and just stick with this mid one again actually not mute sorry bypass bypass now this gives us great flexibility with the sound as well as the shape the sound of that so what we also want to do is definitely some EQ so look personally I like the fab filter one but we're using Cubase plugins so we want freak frequency so definitely we want to put a cut on this bass so we get a low cut 24 now I'm going to bring it up to about I like around 30 what hurts, but it depends. Nice to bring down some of the mids as well. But you can see the phase flips as well on this particular plugin. And our kick's wigging out, so we can also flip the phase. phase you just pick what you like the sound of better basically a bit more gain on the saturator I want it sitting about minus 10 similar to the kick for now anyway so you can see how it's stuffed up the kick again completely and that's why we have to bounce it 
one more time. So render in place, render with current settings. Boom. There it is. And you can see the delay that it's also introduced. So we basically want to cut these both ends again. I like using the middle one. Um, we want to trim it so if we hold control and we slide it over, we can slide it up to the point where we know the base starts. I like to put, well actually we can trim that a bit more so control, slide across to zero crossing, bring it up. And we will do a slight fade out at the end. Dun, dun. Copy it over, copy it over, drop the volume, and here we are. It's nice and tight. We go back into our uh, smexoscope. We can see it's not interfering with the kick anymore. Perfectly tight, nice and level at the top. And fat as. Last thing we really want to do is sort of balance them out against each other, the kick and bass. Reset our meters. And actually I'm pretty happy with those, they're pretty similar. You can sometimes drop the bass down just a dB or two lower. Seems to be quite a popular thing. You can see we've got a nice consistent wave. And uh, yeah, so I like to uh, just add some beats and stuff over the top just so we can hear it in context. Doing the old lazy method again. And let's just copy out our base. And I'll just bounce that down. Make it a bit easier to manage. Whoops. Lay it out. Get our bit of a loop going. Now we can hear it in a little bit of context if I add some ambience, say. A couple of little beat loops. Here we go. So basically, that's a little workflow that you can use if you don't have any other third-party plugins. I'll put a link down below to the Saturator, M Saturator, great plugin. I use it on almost every channel. Um, and you know, you can grab a kick or you can make one. Go and check out um, Homegrown Audio. He's just started his YouTube channel. You can... Um, Go and check out Future Phonics samples. They're absolutely fantastic, pro level, highly recommended by me. Um, and I'm pretty sure Eclip also has some uh, pretty comprehensive tutorials when it comes to kick and bass. So, yeah, I don't think it's fine, hard to find any of that stuff out there if you need a starting point. I thought I'd just throw something out a little bit different using the standard Cubase plugins that everyone has and one free plug plug-in admittedly all right peeps that's mr p psychedelic adventures out